Hello guys and welcome to a new wargame video today by me Vulcan. Today we're going to be looking at the vehicles of the NATO side. I'm sorry I didn't manage to bring you a packed video last week but unfortunately Steam Offline went wrong so I couldn't actually go on the game to record it so I'm sorry about that and hopefully there will be a packed video this week. Um, and I'll be starting the pack tutorials on Fridays and on Mondays I'll be going back to doing gameplays of me playing with NATO so basically there'll be one gameplay with me playing NATO and an armory video with me talking about packed units so hopefully you guys who've been looking forward to the pack stuff we can uh, get onto that so I've just uh, turned off the pack stuff and we're going to move down now to look at the vehicles so the vehicles are they're strange the vehicles on NATO are much better I would say than the vehicles on Pact now the reason being is they do have a lot of really really good units for example the Bradleys the Jaguar 2's the uh, I think the weasels are in here somewhere. If I can find them. <laughs> this is really bad. There they go. The weasels. And yeah. So we've got quite a lot to get through. So yeah. First of all we have the AML-60. Now this is a mortar carrier. Basically it's, it's very much like the mortars I was talking about in the last video. But it's very very fast and very maneuverable. It can't take much damage though, so be careful. But I would definitely, definitely recommend getting AMR 60s over the M12 5A1s because, like, they cost the same, as you can see. They do the same damage, except this gun is basically on a much faster hull. So this mortar carrier can only go 40 kilometers per hour. This mortar carrier can go 90 kilometers per hour. Now, I was talking about in the last one that the counter artillery really, really, really badly can take out mortars and and basically counter artillery is the thing you have to watch out for. Well, with a 90 km per hour speed, you can zoom this thing around the map and dodge all that fire. Now, it doesn't come with as much ammo, obviously, so you do need to keep them like resupplied because it's a very small vehicle. But then again it does have that one front armor exactly the same so it's more or less just as durable but it's faster and it, although it has less ammo you never really run out because you can literally zoom it back to base reload uh, at an FOB because it's so fast so that's what it's really really good for and yeah that's one of my recommended artillery units because I honestly really really like the mortar on it it's just awesome now the AML 90 links I think I've only ever seen these used properly once I was uh, watching a stream of Tiggers the guy who basically the number one Brit on the game and he was playing a 2v2 I think against another couple of really good players who were uh, part of the Eugen systems team and I think the guy on his team, I think it was Firestarter, used these AML-90 Lynxes and I was like, hang on, why is he using them? But then I went to look at them and they're not actually that bad. They have 80 km per hour speed, one armour, so they don't get like pounded shit by RT very easily. And they're, they're, they're just, they're extremely fast and they're very, very cheap. So they're 15 each. They have an accuracy of 3, AP power of 4, HE power of 3. They're basically the same as like the T-3485 on the pack side at that equivalent but they're much faster so they're, they're sort of like hit and run they can just sort of rush an enemy position that's that's lightly fortified and, and probably get away with it which is basically what their role is now I don't use them too often but obviously if you have the AMX 60s on your deck then you're always well the AML-90 Lynx is always there if you have it unlocked to test out if you want to use it. So it's a pretty nice combination to have because the AML-90 Lynx is actually the upgrade for the AML-60 even though it costs less. I think it's the only unit in the entire game that the second variant costs less. <laughs> but there we go. I think. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. 
I don't know, some of you may know otherwise, but I think that's the case, to be honest. Then we got the AMX 10P. This is a uh, IFV, or Infantry Fighting Vehicle. It's basically a carrier that can carry chasseurs and, well, chasseur for mass and uh, legion, I think, as well, legion for mass. But basically, this is uh, quite a good carrier, but it's not as good at its role as some other carriers. So for instance, this goes 65 kilometers per hour, has a front armor of one, a side armor of one. If you're gonna bring this in, I would bring it in with the chasseur for mass. But honestly, I don't think it's really worth it because there's things like the weasel that we get to eventually that are a hundred times better. Like even though they don't have any armor compared to the AMX 10P, you'll see that you don't really need it because how close you have to be to utilize this auto cannon, um, this armor is going to be irrelevant when you come up against targets that can actually destroy this thing. So yeah, that's going to be a problem. So I'm I wouldn't recommend getting it unless you're going to bring it in with chasseurs or well chasseur for mass. Now the AMX 10P Milan. This is one of the first HGM units in the vehicles, and. It comes with the Milan F1 with an accuracy of 5 and also the auto cannon similar to the MX MP. Now, some people I have seen people use these before, but again, it's one of those units I think you can bring it in with infantry. And that's what I would recommend to do it with if you can. Let me just check. Oh, actually, no, you can't. Okay. Well, I'm just being stupid. But basically, it's. <laughs> I don't know, it's one of those things I was talking about in the tanks where you should pick things for their role, for being good at their role. Now this costs 40 and you don't get a very good accurate ATG, ATGM, you get the Milan F1 which is like the worst variant of the Milans. And if you go on to the HOT which is the second variant, you get an AMX HOT 1 which is like 5 more but although it doesn't have an auto cannon, it has 2 more accuracy and 1 more AP power. And honestly, that's worth it in some cases. But then again, just because it's armored doesn't mean it's worth it. There are other things on the de the NATO deck, like the M15 1A2 toes, which people completely overlook because they don't have any armor, they're just jeeps. But for the same role, you're saving 25 points. And although this doesn't have any armor, you should never be in the range of something with an ATGM gem unit to be shot at by something that's going to destroy you that close. The only thing you have to be worried about with an ATGM gem unit is how much accuracy the enemy has because they're going to be firing at you from a distance, not really up close, hopefully, unless you get ambushed by infantry or something. But so some people like to use these. I, I don't see why not. Like they are quite good, but there are things better like the M12 or the M15 1A2 toes so yeah it's up to you whether you bring these in if you prefer armored units or whether you prefer just light units which fill the same role but you can save a lot of points by by using the the jeeps rather than these so yeah i wouldn't rec recommend these i'm not a fan my myself but i might try and do a video with them eventually to just test out how they are so anyway, moving on to the striker. Now I did a pretty awesome video on this uh, a few months back, I guess. I'm not sure if it, how many months, but it was, it was I think a month or two. Anyway, I, I basically took a complete striker army, more or less. It was like I had about 15 strikers or something stupid, or 12 or whatever it was, three groups of four. And basically I raped out of them. Now, they have a really badly accurate um, A to gem, but I could imagine that if these were vetted, I've never vetted them myself, I could imagine if they were vetted though, they would be very, very effective. The good thing about the striker is it can fire its missiles very, very quickly. You can see the system at the back here, the swing fire um, system, basically allows them to fire off these five A to gems, like one after the other, pretty much really quickly. So. As long as it doesn't get hit while it's firing, it can seriously just dish out loads of ATGMs gems and just like spam the enemy with them. And that can be really effective even though they aren't very accurate. So if you're lucky, for instance, and you have four of them, it's, it's 
if you have like four ATGM units, it's, it's more than likely that at least one will hit every time. So say if you've got four, which are each firing five, that means at least five of the ATGMs, which do 13 AP power, are going to hit. Now that's quite effective, but you have to get them in the right position to really do the damage that you want to do. Speed of 70 kilometers per hour can really get them out of trouble, and they are reasonably armored, so bear that in mind. Now moving on to the Spartans, these are just fast APCs, probably the best British APC, and yeah, there's not really much to say, you just bring them in with fusiliers or whatever, um, they're quite good support vehicles, but honestly, the VABs are a million times better, so we'll get to them eventually. The Raden, now <laughs> I like this tank because it's British, but the auto cannon sucks. The auto cannon is terrible. It's cheap, this vehicle is really cheap, and I can see why people might use it because it comes with quite an accurate auto cannon but that auto cannon like I say it fires really slowly its rate of fire is terrible compared to something like an AMX 10P with 160 rounds per minute the Raden has 60 rounds per minute so it's, it's terrible the speed is not great and it has no armor so it's gonna get popped very very easily now the Saracen is just this is just the sort of video vehicle you bring in with um, blowpipes. That's what. That's all these are good for. Just supporting the, the crap infantry that you bring in with the Brits. Um, although they can be useful with this HE power to sort of chase helicopters. Now I know that sounds stupid, but if you're say in a, in a forest or something and you got helicopters flying over the, above you, then pushing Saracens underneath them can kill them. I'm not even lying. Now moving on to the M113s, we've got another armor personnel carrier. These are the American ones. Now I kind of talked about these in the infantry um, section, but basically they're slow. They're not very good. This machine gun sucks. <sighs> well, the M2 Browning machine gun's obviously good, and if you get it in the right place, similar to the Saracen, you can damage helicopters. But it's not going to really kill infantry for you or anything else. It will just die. The only good thing about this carrier is it's armoured, and the, the third variant is supremely armoured in every side, so it'll keep your infantry safe a little bit longer, but it's really, really slow, so they're probably just going to get caught out anyway. Now, the M113 106mm RR. Now, <laughs> basically, RR stands for recoilless rifle, and I've never seen anyone use these. I haven't un obviously unlocked them, so, you know, I'm not I can't really say they're good or not, but basically the recoilless rifles are useless on this game, um, unless you're very, very close to an enemy tank and manage to ambush, but you can't really ambush with a speed of 40 kilometers per hour. So yeah, not going to end well unless you sort of hide them and then pop them out behind enemy tanks. I guess that could be viable. Now the M150, this has an ATGM, gem similar to the tow jeeps that I'll get onto eventually and this is quite fast I can see why people would use this it's it's one of those ones that's not overly expensive and is armored so it's got an accuracy of 8 AP power of 12 and yeah I can see this being used but I've never personally gone for it myself because I've always preferred using the jeeps so again I'm, I'm not, I can't really say how people would use these except from the fact that you just have them as long range AT gems which could potentially be quite damaging but the action the like I say you don't need the armor if you're going to be miles away you, you need to just be worried about the enemy's accuracy the M901 ITW now the first time I saw one of these against me I was like holy shit what's that and the reason being is because they do rape ass if you don't take care of them an accuracy of 10 and an AP power of 14 and the, with the ITO system is like just crazy. It's, it's, it's the best HGM I would say in the game and it's very very good, very very powerful. I've never used it before, like obviously because I haven't unlocked it, but the speed allows you to get it around. You can, you can if you use a couple of these say with uh, strong pushing tanks so you say you have a couple of leopards um, moving forwards, leopard 2A4s. You push them forwards and you need, and they come up with TATUs. If you've got a couple of these on either side and you pop uh, one of the TATUs in the side, then they're just going to blow up. That's just it. 
<laughs> they, they're, they're really good for that. That's They're amazing if you're going to hit armor in the side. Anything below like the max armor of 10 is just going to get killed one shot anyway. So, you know, it's... <laughs> It's pretty powerful. It's just the, the the jeeps you can you can also get this Ito system. But yeah, like I say, the, they can move around quite quickly, so they can get into those flanking positions, and the the armor will basically keep them alive against artillery. So they're not going to get like mortared to hell, and then uh, not be completely or be completely useless. Now the M113 GA1. That's basically just a German variant of the M113. You got the M one three two Zippo. Now the Zippo is a strange tank. It used to be really overpowered because basically what you could do is you could fire position pretty much anywhere within the radius of its like well anywhere within the range of the vehicle itself. So even if you couldn't see someone or couldn't see the area you were trying to fire at, then you could literally just fire within the range, and it was really overpowered against infantry. Like. If somebody had infantry in a forest and you drove up to well you didn't even have to see the middle of the forest you could just spray it with flames and everyone would die so what they did was they nerfed it by making it line of sight based so you can only fire where you can see which worked really well in terms of balancing the game against an overpowered unit but then it kind of made this unit redundant unless you're defending against infantry which is rushing against you over an open field and you happen to have a zippo but the thing is, the trouble with the Zippo now is that it's not worth having because it takes up that one deck slot that you could use for something better. And that's the only trouble with that unit now. So it's good if you are if you need to take care of infantry that's attacking you. If somebody's attacking you heavily with infantry or APCs or whatever, it can, it can stun them and really help you out. But otherwise, it's pretty useless. You can't really use it to push infantry out of... Uh, forests anymore because it just doesn't fire fast enough to really attack the infantry before the infantry rockets it so that's its only problem now it's, it's, it's more of a defensive vehicle than an offensive vehicle now now we're finally on to the M15 102 toes that I keep talking about now you're probably thinking what are these things now these are honestly probably one of the most overpowered units in the game now you're paying 20 for the original which gives you an accuracy of 8 and an AP power of 12 and 30 for an accuracy of 10 and an AP power of 14 and they both have the exactly the same stats otherwise you've got the same operational range and fuel capacity which is really really good by the way um, basically they'll never run out of fuel you'll never get stranded um, and they both have the same speed 65 kilometers per hour it's perfectly enough to to get around and be a good flanking vehicle and the although they don't have any armor now that is the biggest thing about these is they can be mortared very easily so you have to keep an eye on them um people do like to well they won't get mortared versus packed because obviously packed doesn't have mortars but if you're saying playing nato versus nato they're going to get mortared but people on the pack side will just rocket rt them or um use danners or some other heavy artillery and just pound the crap out of them until they die because they die really quickly and they only need like one shell to land by them and they just go boom so it's it's not great in that respect and that's why some people do prefer these sort of armored units because they survive but like i say i, I really like these these itos because they can they can get around and they can really do the damage you need them to do for their role so for instance same same principle as before you got two leopard 2a4s pushing forwards and you got two t80us coming in the opposite direction getting these into position rather than say these for instance then you're saving i don't know 25 points for the same thing and the, the leopards aren't going to be firing at these well they might do and well they would do if they're sensible but the trouble is, even if they fired at these, they would still do the same damage. So, because th these only have one armor, it's not going to affect it that much. It won't keep it alive, that's for sure, against like a TATU shot. But these are smaller as well, so they're going to take less, or they're, they're going to be harder to hit. You can see this size is normal, and this size is small, so they're going to be very much harder to hit. So, 
like I say, they're, they're just like the same thing, for the same role, except from they do like they, the same damage, but they're cheaper. So I would, don't know why anyone else would take anything else, other than for the fact that they can't get arted as easily if they're armored, which these aren't. So that's why some people would take armored vehicles instead for AT gems. But yeah, basically, it's the same principle in terms of the AT gems and stuff. It's just they're unarmored. Now the M2 Bradley IFB is the infantry fighting vehicle that you can obviously you can bring in with some of the infantry. Now they do have the ITO system and the tow system on the first one has the tow and the second one has the ITO. If you're going to bring these in, always bring in the second variant because they only cost five more and you get an A to gem that's like I don't know. You got two two more actually and two more AP power. It's just totally worth it. And um, the rest doesn't change. It's literally just the A to gem, but that A to gem is worth it because these are basically snipers. Yeah, they don't have much much accuracy, and um, like they they do have a reasonable amount of missiles to use, so they can like be really helpful in supporting troops. But that's this is what I mean. Like I would much rather have a M two A one Bradley with his auto cannon and this ATGM than just this ATGM on this. That's probably why I've never taken this because it doesn't have anything else to offer, and. I would much rather have like a two M two A one Bradley than, and it's exactly the same cost. Who would want this thing when you can get a Bradley? Bradleys are just awesome, and they have a really good auto cannon, which is really accurate, and has a high rate of fire. So it's a really good supporting vehicle. And uh, if you're going to go quite heavy armor strategy, then these are good to have on your deck because of that ATGM and it's just gonna it's gonna help you so much and you'll see if you brought in these instead you're gonna ask yourself why didn't you bring in a Bradley there you go and yeah the armor one's one front one side one rear one top it's exactly the same it's exactly the same it's just that this has a stabilizer for its auto cannon and yeah although it's not great it's not a stabilizer to be honest but it's just it's, to me it's a no-brainer and hopefully it is to you guys as well. The only thing I have to be say, as I remember, is that you have to keep uh, these M151A2 ITOs um, resupplied because they only have an ammo of four. Do be careful of that because otherwise they'll fire off all their missiles really, really quickly and you'll be like, oh shit, they have no ammo left when you really need them. So be careful because often, actually that is a good point to make. If you're stuck against HGMs, bait them. People don't turn off their weapon systems. So basically, if they've got AT gems, like spammed AT gems in a, in a bush, send like a really cheap units at them and just make them spam AT gems at them because they'll waste all that really good AT gems, which will take ages to resupply. And then as soon as all their AT gems are gone, you can just like push in with your heavy tanks and take them all out because they won't have any ammo left. So that's one thing you can do, but just be careful of the ammo because obviously there's not always a way of knowing if they're resupplying or not. So just be careful. Now moving on to the next ones, we've got the another recoilless rifle Jeep, which is crap. I know I unlocked it. And then you've got the French version of the Ito Jeep, but it's just using in Milan F1. Not even a Milan F2, just a Milan F1. I don't get that. <laughs> but it's much, much cheaper. And it's got an accuracy of 5, uh, which is not good. Not good at all. So anyway, Marder 1s. Marda ones. Hmm. Now these are some of the, I would say most. It's one of the really really good units in NATO. The Marda ones you have to use them properly to begin with, but they they are insane support vehicles. They can. They, there's no specific role. They just sort of do stuff. <laughs> you bring them in and they rape shit. That's it. Unless they come up against heavy tanks, because look at their armor. They have two armor. Two front, two side, and that is going to keep them alive a long time. They've got 70 kilometers per hour speed. They can get really, really close to an enemy really quickly, and then this auto cannon can just rip the crap out of people with a 300 round per minute rate of fire. Now, <laughs> it's really insane. Like an auto cannon with that rate of fire is crazy, and it can rip the hell out of basically light to medium tanks at close range, and. Be aware of that because it can seriously just own people. 
And I have seen uh, games where people have spammed these before, but spam, spamming these doesn't work very well. You just sort of have to use them to support other units. And then say if you're pushing into a forest with infantry and then you come across some APCs that are sort of giving your infantry trouble, then you can just send in a couple of martyrs and they'll just take them out no problem. Um, also, if there's like HGM units in there, send in a couple of martyrs, they'll take them out. It's, it's one of those units that can really really take out all those support units that are supporting the enemy units. So this is like a sort of anti-support unit, <laughs> basically. Now the other variants of the Mardas just come with better rated gems. So they're pretty much the same, except for the last Marda has one more front armor. But the rated gems they come with are the Milans again. Now the Milans, I'm not a fan of the Milans. The Milans are just inaccurate rated gems. They're just really unreliable. Like yes, these two go well, the, the 1A2 goes faster overall, and the 1A3, although it has more armor, actually goes slower. So bear that in mind. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend ever really getting these variants. Maybe the first variant, the 1A1, it might be worth getting occasionally. But most people just take these for the original Marder 1, because this is quite a good value for money um, vehicle, costing only 25. Now if we move on to the Marder VTSI. Now, I think it's the Marder VTS-1. I, I don't know if that's a 1 or an I, but I think it's a, it's a 1. I always call it a VTSI, but there we go. Um, it costs 20, and it's insanely good. You've got an AP power of 4, accuracy of 3. It's very similar gun to the um, T-3485 on the pack side, except for it has that one extra AP power that can be really powerful, and it also has uh, two front armor, two side armor, and a speed of 70 kilometers per hour. This is an insane rushing tank. This is this is a rush tank. This is all it is basically. You can bring in like 20 of these, I think, and you just rush them towards the enemy. And if you don't win, then you lost basically. <laughs> because what what I often see people using these for, like I say, is rushing, but with the weasels that we will get to eventually. Because these are crazy, crazy vehicles. Anyway, um, yeah, speed of 70 armor will keep them alive. On the rush, they when you're rushing, you don't really need to rely on armor so much. It's like you need at least one armor to keep them alive against super light vehicles and uh, artillery, but basically as long as they like cuz they're going to be getting so close to the enemy anyway, the armor be kind of becomes obsolete. It's really the speed and this gun that makes them really, really good, and the cost, obviously. Um, costing only 20 makes them really, really good. And um, honestly, can turn the tide of a battle. Say if you're losing, and um, somebody's pushing against you quite hard, and you've got a few points left over, and you spam out some VTSIs, and you just rush back the opposite direction towards them, uh, they're not going to expect that, and it's going to really, really hurt them. Just be careful of these against the infantry, because they will die. <laughs> That's one thing to uh, watch out for. Now we've got the uh, Rakuten Jagdpanzers. Now, I've seen these ban before. They're useless. They honestly are. I think if you vet them, Max, they're not even that great either. Um, I can imagine these are the sort of vehicles that you'd have to vet. They only cost 15, so vetting them fully will cost about 30. And then the accuracy of their HGM might improve a lot, but... I'm, I'm not entirely convinced because if you watch one of these AG gems fly through the air, they just sort of wiggle all over the place and it's it's, it's very disconcerting. But um, yeah, the speed is not great either. <laughs> Armor, not great. They're just sort of like spam units. Um, you bring in a lot of these if you really want to use them. Now, the second variant, basically the same, just with a little bit better armor and faster speed. And um, yeah. A little bit better optics, I think, and more missiles. That's the difference when you're paying five more. But that five more isn't even worth it. You'd only want to pay five more if you, if it gave you more accuracy, which it doesn't. So that's not. I wouldn't recommend getting the second variant of the Rakuten Jagdpanzer. Now the Jaguar One. Now we're getting onto the serious stuff. Two front armor, one side armor. 70 kilometer per hour speed and comes with the hot system, the hot one. Um, accuracy is 7 AP power 13. A very, very good support to HGM unit. Uh, I quite like these and I've used them before. 
I don't at the moment because obviously I like the Jeeps. But if I was to use an armoured HGM unit, I would use the Jaguars because they're, they're, they're really reliable. The last variant of it, the one that comes with the Ito system, has that same two front armour and side armour. It just comes with basically the better HGM for 15 more cost. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really awesome to be honest. It's... I like it because of this front armor. It keeps it alive. Like I know it's I know I said that armor wasn't a big factor as long as you've only got one. You've either got an armored HGM unit or you haven't. But in this case, <laughs> the armor does help. It's it's strange. It's it's hard to from my experience, that armor's always kept them alive. Um at long distance. It's it's weird. But yeah, the speed allows them to get into uh, good flanking positions and these tracks make them amazing for get like being in forests and flanking through forests because one, one thing that i find really annoying with the jeeps is that because they have wheels they do get stuck in the mud a lot like and um other things like that they do suffer from mobilization in forests and and deep cover whereas like tractor units don't so much so that's why a jaguar is good and that speed really helps it get around in rough areas now the fooks best a uh, apc no, i'd say second best apc on the nato side really really fast it's the fastest apc and um yeah jaegers and fooks that's all i need to say really for that um mentioned it in my infantry video um vabs now <laughs> these are awesome you can bring them in on your own and some people do have the vabs on their own in the decks because they are very powerful they said like the m2 browning is a good machine gun um at close range it can do serious damage to to light armored or unarmored vehicles in the back or side armor so yeah it's it's really good for that and the operational range allows it to get miles and the speed is really really good so it can it can completely outflank the enemy it only costs 10 you can spam the crap out of them and yeah they vet themselves really quickly when they destroy stuff so they're very good if you want to rush but yeah they just take out light units which don't have much armor so if you just like info units a an enemy vehicle and see if it has armor just rush and if it doesn't just rush loads of VABs at it and it will die eventually basically that's how you do it now the VAB Mephisto is basically a VAB but with an HGM on it the hot one system the 7 accuracy and 13 AP power it's reasonably good. People like to use this quite a lot. The one front armor, like I say, it's one of the armored vehicles rather than un unarmored. Protects it against um, artillery, and it's very, very mobile. So it can catch out enemies. This the only trouble is with this vehicle is this accuracy. If this came with an Ito system on it, it would be so overpowered. It would be unbelievable. But there we go. That's why it doesn't. And the hot one with this accuracy isn't really worth getting. I would much rather just like get a Bradley. Uh, a weasel. Now we're into the weasels. I've never unlocked them because I've never used them and never been cheap enough to spam them at people. But basically, they're the ultimate spam unit. If you like rushes, get the Marder VTSIs, get the weasel ones, get the VABs, and just spam people. Um, that's one way to win um, on NATO. This one, I think, probably like the guy who won the war game cup and did or whatever i don't know but i, I wouldn't say that because he might not have he might have played really well but i didn't really watch the the last matches so i have to get around to that eventually we'll have to look at the final because the final is pretty um unanimous and the nato guy won by like 1600 points or something it was crazy but anyway um weasel ones this auto cannon, they get the 300 round per minute auto cannon, the same as the Marder ones. And actually, of three, AP power of one, HP power of one. The AP power of one is, is one thing I forgot to mention about this auto cannon. I think most auto cannons have, yeah, AP power of one. Um, basically, at close range, it basically means they can penetrate armored vehicles. And therefore, these things are super fast when they're on road. So, 75 kilometers per hour. The only trouble is their operational range is really, really short. So, but basically the, that doesn't matter because they just push down the the fastest route to the enemy base. 
that's all their job is. And if they run out of fuel on the way, no one cares. It's just like they sit there and just kill shit. They can take out helicopters really quickly with this insane rate of fire. And yeah, it's just awesome. They they suffer from ammo, obviously, but like I say, they're, they're just waste units as, as you're rushing. And they're really good. You just have to take my word for it. I've been killed by it millions of times, and so many of other people have been as well. A lot of people call them overpowered. I just say not enough people have really, I don't know, played against it to really stop it. So actually in my last game play, I stopped an, uh, a weasel rush with Apaches. Now that's not the most ideal thing to do. Um, more likely you'd use something like Cobras because they don't have any armor. So like the front, the, the bad thing about these weasels is they can be stopped pretty easily if somebody knows how to get rid of them. Because they don't have any armor, you can just like rocket pod them with 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 uh, cobras, and they will die. So bear that in mind. Cobras are probably like the most ideal units to really stop a weasel rush. Just don't let them get too close. Otherwise, the weasels will just tear them out of the sky with their really fast rate of fire auto cannon. Now, finally, we've got well, finally for the vehicles, we've got the weasel one tow. This basically is just another unarmored vehicle with the tow. Now it costs 35 compared to the Jeep which costs 20 and has the same age gem. So for me it's just not worth it. If that had armor it might be but it's, it doesn't so it's not. That's basically it. So that's all of the vehicles done. Um, hopefully that's been insightful. I'm going to be going on to the helicopters next time, probably not going to be a very long video next time because obviously there's not many helicopters, but yep, yeah, hopefully this has been useful, um, vehicles are awesome for the NATO and I hope you've uh, realised that by me going through them, but yeah, thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video, goodbye.